Dear students, Assalamu alaikum. In this tutorial, I am going to solve an example for tabulation method. So, this is my question written here. The function is defined by ABC and there are some uh, main terms written over there. So, basically, they are written in some product form. All right. So, let's try to solve this question. So, this is our question. So, at first, uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to represent those terms. Uh, using binary bits all right so a prime b prime c uh, will become 0 0 0 and a prime b prime c will become 0 0 1 basically i'm following a simple rule so when there is a prime i'm putting 0 and when there is no prime i'm putting on 1 all right uh, so that's right uh, and that's why uh, this representation are looking like this so similarly i'll be representing all of those terms and finally it will look something like this all right so once I'm done uh, representing them in binary bits, now I can actually uh, I can actually write their corresponding decimal representation, right? So basically, our question can be represented uh, by this line, right? The function stays the same, a, b, c, and here the values just got changed. So uh, at this place, we have written them, uh, we wrote them using sum of product form, but right now our question becomes uh, like this. In case of we write them in their decimal representation all right so we just converted them into binaries and then we wrote the decimal representation for uh, those binaries all right? so right now our question looks like this one and this is a very similar form uh, though uh, this actually looks like those questions we which we have solved in our previous tutorials all right so this uh, scenario right here should be familiar to you okay so let's start solving it now so at first I'm gonna be writing all of those numbers in ascending order uh, from smallest to largest right there and I will also write their uh, binary numbers alongside it okay so I have represented all of those decimal terms uh, using three bits of binary so why did I use three bits that's because the largest mean term here is six and six can be represented easily um, by using at least three binary bits so that's why I have represented all of the numbers using three binary bits. And you can also uh, verify it this way that there is the function and the function is defined by three variables. So that's why uh, we have uh, used three bits of binary to represent those main terms. All right. So after that, uh, I want to group the binary numbers based upon number of ones in them. So basically, there will be three groups. The first group will consist of uh, no one at all and the second group will consist of those binary numbers which have uh, a single one in them and the third group will consist of those binary numbers which have two one in them all right so basically i'll group them and i'll put them into my next step so this step is called step two so here you can see our step two look like this one okay the first uh, group uh, is here and there's the second group and there's the thir uh, third group all right so right now our math looks like this step one and step two so what uh, I will do now is that I'm going to be finding single bit differences from step two. So um, how can I do it? I can do it by comparing the main terms of one group with the main terms of another group. All right. And I want to find the single bit differences among them. OK, so when I compare, I just need to compare one group with its immediate next group. All right. So A will be compared to B and B will be compared to C. I will not compare A with C, all right, because I just want to compare one group with its immediate next group. That's why A will be compared to B and B will be compared to C, all right. So uh, let's begin. So our first comparison looks like this one. The for a number uh, in group A, 0, uh, the binary number of 0 is compared with uh, the binary number of 1 from group B, all right. So uh, here is the comparison. And as you see, there is only one bit difference at the rightmost position right here. So there is only a single bit difference so that's why i want to consider this pair and i'm going to be putting this pair into step three so how can i put this pair into step three so there is a simple rule so uh, let's just see the step three right there so as you see there is the pair zero one and there's the uh, corresponding binary representation for that pair so how did i put a dash here uh, the simple rule is we'll put a dash at the position where we find the bit difference and place the pair in step three so basically i have found the bit difference at the rightmost position and that's why i put a dash over there and the rest of the bits remain exactly the same all right so i'll follow the same procedure for all other uh, comparisons so right now i'm comparing zero with four and 
uh, the scenario I'm getting is like this one so there's a single bit difference at the leftmost position right there and since we got the bit difference at the leftmost position that's why we are considering it and we are putting this into step 3 so when we put this into step 3 it will look something like this one correct so 0 4 the pair is 0 4 and for the leftmost bit difference I got dash over there and the rest of the bits remained exactly the same so basically we'll be following the same structure for all of the other comparisons all right so uh, if I continue my comparison then uh, it will look something like this so from group A and B I'll be getting uh, these two pairs 0 1 and 0 4 all right so if I continue my comparison then from group B and C I'll be getting these pairs 1 5 4 5 4 6 and so on okay so basically our step 3 looks like this one okay so this is our step 2 and after finding out the bit differences uh, by comparing one group with its immediate next group so we're getting something like this okay so this is the step 3 so once we're done with step 3 so right now we're going to go back to our previous step that is step 2 and we're going to put some tick marks um, so some of the numbers from step 2 so where should we put our tick marks so we'll put tick marks beside those numbers on step 2 which we have taken as pairs in step 3 so let me show you what I'm saying so for the first number right there 0 1 the pair is 0 1 alright so since the pair is 0 1 so I'm gonna go back to step 2 and I'm gonna put tick marks uh, beside 0 and 1 as you see 0 and 1 and for the next pair 0 4 I'm gonna be putting tick marks on 0 and 4 the 0 was already checked so that's why I haven't put another tick mark beside that because that will be just redundant so I've just put my tick mark on, uh, beside 4 alright so I will follow the same procedure for uh, rest of the numbers and I will put tick marks accordingly alright so that's it all of my uh, numbers have been uh, checked and here I have put tick marks in all the necessary places alright so uh, whenever we are done with the uh, with finding the single bit difference then we'll go back to the previous step and we'll put tick marks okay so let's move on so this is how our math looks like right now so right now what we're trying to do is that we're trying to find double bit difference from this step 3 okay so what does double bit difference mean so it means that uh, we want to match uh, the position of a dash and we want to find another bit difference all right because as you see the the binary representations in strip 3 all of them uh, have single dash within them right so all of them had uh, all of them have uh, at least one dash in them so basically uh, what I'm trying to match here is that I'm trying to match the binary numbers from group A uh, to the binary numbers of group B and I'm trying to match the position of dashes alright so once I get the dash position matched out then I'm gonna be looking for my second condition and the second condition says if the dash uh, if the dash position matches then we have to look for single bit difference so after we can match the after we are done with the uh, with matching the dash position only then we'll be looking for another bit difference so basically the dash position indicates one bit difference and if we find another bit difference so basically it becomes two bit differences that means double bit difference all right so uh, let me show you what i'm saying so if i compare the first pair of group a 0 1 with the first pair of group b 1 5 then as you see the dash position doesn't match since the dash position doesn't match so i don't need to look for the second condition because the first condition didn't match all right so i'm going to be discarding this uh, those pairs all right so i'll continue my comparison and right now i'm going to be comparing uh sorry i'm going to be comparing 0 1 the pair 0 1 with 4 5 all right and right now as you see the dash position here exactly matches so both of the dashes are at the uh, rightmost position so the dash position matches and since the dash position match uh, since the, the dash position matches so i want to look for the second condition now and the second condition says we have to look for a single bit difference and as you see there is a single bit difference there is only one bit difference except a dash so that's why I'll consider those pairs and once I'm uh, done with such comparison once we get such scenario then we'll be putting those pairs into our next step 
which is actually step 4 all right so i wrote those pairs together here so this is the system to write so 0 1 4 5 will put all of those pairs together and will write their corresponding representation so how did you actually write it dash 0 dash so basically uh, the rule here is that the previous dash will stay as it was all right so the previous dash was uh, at the rightmost position so it will stay as it was and uh, the bit difference we are getting at this stage will be putting a dash over there so we'll put a new dash at the position of the new bit difference so we just got a new bit difference at uh, the our leftmost position so that's why we have put a, a dash over there so i'm indicating it using a, a magenta uh, arrow I would say and the previous dash is indicated with uh, uh, with the yellow arrow okay so this is how we can actually uh, put our uh, match group together in step 4 so if I continue this we'll continue to compare and finally our table in step 4 basically will look like this one so there are two groups in step 3 so from group A and B uh, we compared all of the necessary numbers and we got this result right here okay so uh, we got a pair match here 0 1 and 4 5 and then we also uh, were able to match 0 4 with 1 5 all right so basically uh, those representations look exactly the same that's because uh, they're the same numbers actually so 0 1 4 5 or 0 4 1 5 so all of them are written using commas so basically these are the same groups right so that's why the representations look exactly the same okay so let's move on so this is how our math looks like right now so now that we're done with step 4 so we'll definitely go back to our previous step again and we're gonna be putting check marks beside some of the numbers uh, from step 3 so uh, we'll put check mark beside those pairs in step 3 which we have taken into step 4 so what I'm saying is so for the first uh, group right here uh, in step 4 for the first uh, what should I say for the first set of numbers so 0 1 4 5 uh, basically I've written this using the pairs 0 1 and 4 5 so that's why uh, I have put uh, tick sign beside 0 1 and 4 5 pair and for the next one 0 4 1 5 I put tick marks on 0 4 and 1 5 all right so basically uh, I'm done with putting tick marks on step 3 and our math currently looks like this one this is the whole thing uh, that we have done till now okay so Right now, uh, for our next task, we're gonna be uh, we're, we're gonna be taking out those terms which don't have tick marks beside them. Okay, so from this whole scenario, we're gonna be uh, taking out those terms which don't have tick marks beside them, and we won't be considering step one because in step one we just wrote the main terms in an uh, in a sequential order. We actually didn't do any groups right there, so that's why we are ignoring step one, and we're only gonna be working with step two three and four okay so we want to find those terms which don't have tick marks beside them and we'll call them prime implicants okay so they will be called prime implicants okay so let me just wait so that uh yeah so, so these are called prime implicants okay so uh, let's see how we can find them so basically these are the terms that didn't have tick marks beside them so uh, you can verify it yourself if you want so there you can see four six pair and there's the uh, other groups zero one four five or zero four one five so basically zero one four five and zero four one five uh, are exactly the same thing so that's why i've written it only once zero one four five and the four six pair is right here too so these are the terms which didn't have tick marks beside them so these are the uh, actual prime implicants for our problem okay so now uh, we also want to represent them using variables so in our question the variables were mentioned uh, by abc right so we are going to represent these main terms using abc so if we want to represent them using abc so for our convenience let's just write the variables over here so we're going to be representing them using variables and uh, they will look something like this okay so for the four six pair the number is actually one dash uh, yeah one dash zero right so uh, when whenever we get a dash so we're just going to ignore the dash and represent rest of the bits using corresponding variables right so we got the dash right there uh, at the position of b that's why i'm ignoring b 
and uh, I'm just writing the variables uh, sorry and I'm just writing the representation using the other variables so for one uh, it's only a and since the dash is at B's place so I'm gonna ignore B and there is a zero at C's place so I'm gonna be writing C prime okay so for the first pair for six the representation looks like this one a C prime and if I continue my procedure for the second pair zero one four five so the representation will look like this one B prime because there are uh, two dashes at the position of A and C so only B has a, a specific number zero and since this is zero so this will be B prime all right so finally the representation looks, uh, looks like this okay so let's continue so this is basically our part one so now we now we will be moving into our part two all right so uh, we have built something over here and now we are going to optimize it so uh, in part two at first I'm gonna be creating a new table and this table will have some rows and some columns and uh, in the rows uh, I'll write the prime implicance all right we're going to create this table and in the rows I want to write the prime implicant values and in the column columns I want to write uh, those mean terms which are given in the question so these mean terms are given in the question 0 1 4 5 6 all right so that's why uh, I have written them over here so 0 1 4 5 6 all right and these are the prime implicants that I just uh, calculated a few moments ago okay so that's it so this is how I'm gonna be creating this table so after that now uh, I, I want to put some x okay i want to put some uh, uh put a specific sign the sign is x actually i want to put some x uh, for individual prime implicants so for example ac prime so this prime implicant was derived using okay ac prime was derived from the pair of four six okay so b prime was derived from the group of zero one four five okay so since uh ac prime was derived uh, from the pair of 4 6 so uh, we are going to put an x in the place of 4 and in the place of 6 okay just like that and we'll be continuing the same procedure for b prime so for b prime the uh, x's will be on 0 1 4 and 5th column okay so this is how our uh, table will look like after putting all the necessary x's so next what should we do so right now we're going to find those columns which have only one x in them okay we want to find those columns which have only one x uh, one x in them okay so such columns are basically uh, these are such columns and uh, we'll also put a circle around those single x's okay so uh, let me just rewind a bit so we wanted to find those columns uh, who uh, which have uh, only one x in them and once we find them out then we'll be putting a circle around those x's okay so these are the columns that have only one x in them and just put circle around those x's so okay so once we're done with that so then we're gonna be putting a straight line through those columns and rows where we marked those circles in the previous step that means uh, in our previous step we did mark some of the x's and circle them around okay so and circle them so right now we want to go to those x's and we want to put a straight line over uh, uh, we want to put a straight line over the columns and rows based upon those circled x's okay so uh, we will also put a tick mark at the end of the column just to keep track so let me just show you what I'm saying so since uh, this is a circled x so I want to come here and I and I want to put a straight line uh, over this column and this specific row okay so it will look basically something like this okay so I will uh, I'm putting uh, all of those uh, I'm putting straight lines through all the uh, columns uh, in those corresponding places and I also put some uh, straight lines through the rows where those X's are okay so let me just rewind a bit just for your convenience so whenever we get a circled X we'll be putting a straight line through the columns and the rows okay so then after that it will look something like this one all right so and we have also put some tick marks uh, underneath those columns just to keep track whether uh, we have cancelled the whole column or not so because uh, finally we want to cancel all of our columns okay so till now uh, 0 1 5 6 these are the columns that got cancelled out okay so um, 
our final target is to put straight lines through all the columns as I have said so let's just move on to our next step so right now uh, we have circled some of the axis and then uh, we have put some straight lines uh, both row wise and column wise for those circled axis and for putting straight line through the rows okay this is important for putting straight lines through the rows there were also some other x which got cancelled out indirectly for example you can see you can see that uh, in case of column 4 so for this x or maybe this one so these are the x's that were actually cancelled out indirectly we did not directly cancel them out we actually cancelled some other x's but these were the x's that got cancelled out indirectly so we'll just go to those x's right now and we'll be putting a straight line through that column only okay we'll be putting a straight line only through that column because there's no point putting a straight line over the uh, their rows again because the rows are already cancelled right so we'll be putting the straight line only through the column okay so these x's are uh, cancelled indirectly so i'm going to those x's now and i'm going to be putting a straight line over the column so if i put a straight line then it will look something like this and since this column got cancelled out so i have put a tick mark over there all right so both of the x's were at the same column column 4 that's why uh, only uh, i have just put the straight line only once because it just helped me to cancel out both the x's and also the column okay so right now my uh, uh, whole table looks like this one and right now as you see all of my columns are cancelled out so since all of my columns are cancelled out so right now i just want to uh, find my answer okay i just want to find the answer and if i want to find the answer in that case what i need to do is that i need to look at those circled x's okay i need to look at those circles and take out their corresponding prime implicates okay so uh, let me show you how it is done so for the first uh, circle right there i can write the prime implicant as ac prime okay so this is the prime implicant that is indicating that is, uh, that is at the row for this circle okay so this is the first circle and for this the prime implicant is ac prime so uh, we get ac prime we take we take it out and we write it here ac prime and for the other circles actually all of those circles are at the same row and since all of them are the same row, so they all indicate to the same prime implicant which is actually b prime so for any of those circles basically for all of those circles we get b prime so to get the answer we have to look at the circles and we have to take out their corresponding prime implicants and that's it so our final answer looks like this one ac prime plus b prime and that is our final answer for this problem okay so hopefully you understood it so let me just uh, ask you a bonus question so what would be the answer using tabulation method definitely since we are learning tabulation method if the function was like the following okay so here's the function the function uh, is said to be like this one so the mean terms are basically 0 1 4 and there are some don't uh, don't care terms 2 5 and 6 in my problem uh, all of those terms were written as mean terms there was absolutely no uh, don't care terms but uh, if my question looks like this then how would you solve it and what would be the answer so i hope you uh, understood it and you should be able to uh, should be able to do it because uh, we have already completed our tutorials on uh, tabulation with don't cares without don't cares and we have also seen an uh, example just a few minutes ago so you should be able to do it so best of luck and thank you very much for watching this tutorial